Another effect I like to use a lot is in the inspector panel under composite in its composite mode. What's causing this look is the film burn I have on it. So the film burn is not just the film burn on top because if it was just the film burn, if I had normal, all you see would, would, would be the film burn. And then if I wanted to see the clip underneath, I could go opacity. And that's one way to look, look cool, you know? look but I'm getting these really cool looks from messing around with the composite mode settings. And I, that's why I definitely suggest doing that instead of dropping uh, something on top of something else and then using the, the opacity slider so that way you could see what's underneath. I would definitely suggest trying composite. But the next one I'm gonna show you is the transform effect. When I use the transform tool, I like to use a adjustment clip along with it. You don't have to, you could drop it right on the clip. I wanna be able to move the animation around without it being stuck to a certain part of the main clip, if that makes sense. It's in open effects, type in, start to type in transform. And you can see it here, grab it, drop it. All right, so now it's on the clip. But the reason why I like this is because it comes built in with animated motion blur. If you do it just right, you can create quick zooms with motion blur built in. All you gotta do, I'm gonna just make this simple. So I'm gonna start it here, and then we're gonna go in. I want it to last like five frames. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna zoom in to where I want it to go. And then I'm going to move my positioning so I can frame it up how I want it. Like that. So that's where I want it to stop at. Now I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the adjustment clip and I'm just gonna double click on everything to reset it back to the starting point. Now with the animation, we can crank our motion blur up. So it starts the motion blur knows, okay, when there's motion happening, I'm gonna blur it. And that's what I like about it, cause it's like, you could keyframe it if you wanted to do that, but you don't need to, cause it knows that there's motion happening. It's a still shot, there's no movement on it. I added all that in post, cropped it on the image. I used some of the transition packs from YC Imaging. Did some stuff to the text, turned it vertically, added some camera shake to it, I believe. Doubled it, you know. Just doing some different things to try stuff. The music breaks, so I was trying to emphasize the word pride that comes in. Beat drops again, you see the camera motion there. This is what it looks like without the effect. That's like some scan lines that are there. So that's actually built into DaVinci Resolve. You go to over to here to open effects, type in scan, drop it in. You can play with the bars, move them around, how, how sharp it is, the frequency, the angle, the shift, you can mess with all that stuff. This is one clip right here that I that I basically doubled uh, and flipped it to create this mirror effect. As you can see, that clip is gone there and that's one there. So the same uh, video clip, I just stacked it and flipped one. And you can just do that by coming over to transform and you can see where here where it says flip, you can take it off. And that's how it was originally. And this is how it is once I did that. And I just had an adjustment clip on top to do the zoom effect on both without having to program that because that would have been annoying. But this adjustment clip has it. Take it off. This is what the image looks like. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful to you. And if it was, leave a like and be sure to let me know in the comments below what effects you're going to be using. Subscribe if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve tips and tricks like this. And until next time, peace.